Okay, let's so go, fun. buddy. I got, I got to stop. We're going to the bathroom. Just go, man. Uh, that's your really warm. What's up guys, it's your boy Benny. You ever heard of Sturgis, South Dakota? This is a normally sleepy little town of 7,000 people in the middle of South Dakota. It's kind of hard to get to. It looks sort of like an old timey uh, clapboard, Western movie, Clint Eastwood movie set looking town. Except for one week out of the year where it becomes the motorcycle capital of the world. One of the largest motorcycle rallies on planet Earth, arguably the largest motorcycle rally on planet Earth. Everyone who owns or rides a bike descends on Sturgis, South Dakota, and they just had their annual rally wrapping up this week. Now, you can recall that Budweiser, in an attempt to build back their brand, build back better, <laughs> working out about as well, uh, decided to release a Harley Davidson ad. Now, a lot of people who are going to Sturgis, these are uh, big time manly men, Muscular bikers from around America, a lot of them ride Harleys, right? Budweiser tried to appeal to them and say, please, God, don't not drink our beer. They released a Harley Davidson manly advert as Anheuser-Busch tries to recover from the Bud Light backlash. Literally the polar, the, the, the polar opposite of what they released with Dylan Mulvaney. The ad looks like this. The greatest legacies are built with grit and resilience, one detail at a time. Limited edition Budweiser Harley Davidson cans. For those who give everything to their craft, this Bud's for you. Okay, so the question is, did it work, right? So d d despite that ridiculous ad, oh, funny how you fi finally a white guy in an ad. Wow, what a miracle. <laughs> oh, no, all of our customers are old white guys. Now we got to put them in ads. Oh, no. But Wiser with the stress and the cope there, uh, did it work? Well, we have a video from Sturgis, South Dakota. Again, the largest biker rally. You're talking, I, I, it's like 100,000 people going to this rally, 100,000 people going to this one teeny little town, increasing the population of the town by 100,000%. Dude, check this out. Zero attendees at Budweiser tent in Sturgis. This may be the biggest marketing blunder of all time. Here's a uh, video that was posted by our friends at Old Row. Check this out. Well guys, as you know, we've been a little bit intrigued with this Budweiser controversy and as it relates to motorcycle riders, um, I gotta tell you right now though, not looking good. As you can tell, Budweiser is spending an awful lot of money. They're ramping up the motorcycle campaign. These guys working hard, we give them a big shout out. You can get a Sturgis glass in there, right? Sturgis glass, that's good. Thank you very much Budweiser, we appreciate you. There's no the one thing. Right now, there. Right now, maybe because of the bad PR, the controversy, people staying away from the Bud tent. We'll keep an eye on that to see if that's the case all week. I still say it's going to blow over. I think it's going to take some time, though. What say you? It's interesting. The reason I'm interested is I heard Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank give his two cents about how a brand should never pick a polarizing issue. And that is the unenviable position that Budweiser found themselves in right now. But as a wise man said on Cycle Drag, political views may be no match for alcoholism in the end. I think if you like Budweiser, you'll probably come back to Budweiser. Although some may switch. What See, that's where you're wrong, kiddo. That's where you're wrong. <laughs> Look at this. So I want to give you some perspective here as to how many people go to this rally. So when there's no one in the tent, it's not that he caught them at a bad time of day. Look at this. Look at this. These are photos of Sturgis. You're talking a hundred thousand people, a hundred thousand bikers come here from all over. Look at this. Look at all the, look at all, look at, look at, look at the amount of, look at the amount of people in this photo. Just massive. Just mad. Look at that. It goes on and on and on and on and on. Massive. 
dude, seriously, there, there are hundreds of thousands of people who come to this rally every single year. There you go. Here we go. They can fill the entire street, packed, shoulder to shoulder. And not a single one of them was at the Budweiser time. <laughs> Expect to see a lot more of this during the NFL season. Expect to see a lot more of this during uh, sports season ramping up here, college football season. People, they're not going to come back. I don't know whose TikTok that was. Uh, thanks for reporting on Sturgis. Uh, they're not coming back. Yo, it, 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 you're done. Okay, you're done. We can have we have the data to prove it. Okay, we have a couple of points of data to prove it. All right, not just us like ragging on uh, Budweiser because we, we because they're such a terrible brand and they're so stupid. There's a really good Forbes article actually talking about this. But here, the hard data, right? One, they've lost twenty billion dollars. But what they've really lost here is the American people. It's never coming back. This is a map I like to show. I've showed it before. But it's really, really instructive. Red is Budweiser. These are the most popular beers in April of this year. Okay? In April of this year. Red is Budweiser. Grapefruit color, the kind of pinkish color, is Budweiser. Very appropriate there. And uh, you have some other Bud Light brands, like Bush Light is the periwinkle blue. Good for you, Kentucky and Tennessee. Bush Light, way to go. Anyway, those are Anheuser-Busch brands. And here's the map today. There's not a single Anheuser-Busch brand that is the most popular beer. In the month of July. Not one. Not a single one. I, I don't know how much I, I don't know how much more how much more damage can a single person cause? How much more damage can a single decision cause? But so goes, so goes the decision by marketers to choose political, se politically sensitive, dangerous suicidal marketing practices like this one that insult your customers, insult their worldview, insult their religion, insult their traditions. Have that. And you're never going to get, you're never going to get back, right? You're never going to get back. See if you see a little difference between this advertisement that Budweiser paid for a lot of money. This is just one of many advertisements from Dylan Mulvaney and the Budweiser partnership. Again, it was a campaign. Hashtag it was a campaign. This wasn't a one-off. Like Budweiser says, they lie to you. They've lied to the press. They've lied to you. See if you can see the difference between that, this, and this. The greatest yeah. legacies are built with grit <laughs> and resilience. One detail at a time. Limited edition Budweiser Harley Davidson cans. And how'd that, how'd that work out for you? Yeah, it looks like this. You jack. <laughs> yeah, it's. Listen, man, you're 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 just you're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get it back. So they've lost billions of dollars. Bud Light's lost billions of dollars. But they've really done. What they've actually really done is lost the faith of their customers. Because in every step of the way, they have made the decision to piss off more people here. Okay. Now, somebody tweeted at me yesterday that you could put the TMFI and our girl on the can, Tiffany Gomez, and maybe you could win back <laughs> all of your customer base. Maybe you could. But you're really going to suffer after reading Fortune magazine. Bud Light's downfall marks a seismic shift in consumer behavior. Parent company, Ambev, doesn't seem to get it. America's largest brewer released its net profit, which showed mixed results. U.S. sales volumes tanked. And now they are starting to fire hundreds of workers. Really, really bad. I mean, this is the stuff that we really weren't looking forward to. Uh, AB, Anheuser-Busch, is laying off hundreds of employees as it grapples with months of slumping but light sales. The storm showed that Anheuser-Busch executives don't really care about social influence, marketing oversight, or communication with customers. Distributors are resigned to the painful Bud Light losses, giving up on luring back disaffected customers, just like Sturgis, right? The empty area of Sturgis. After four months of hiring freezes, layoffs, truck drivers getting heckled and harassed, 
mid-June Bud Light lost its title as America's top-selling beer to its Mexican rival. As the boycott remains strong, retailers will, retailers will begin allocating their limited sell, shelf space to other brands, to which could further impact sales. Multiplying advertising campaigns and discounts are not enough to resolve the underlying problem. Yeah, and what is the underlying problem? Say it with me. They spit in the face of their paying customer. There it is. Disney, Lucasfilm, Marvel, Target, and go down the list. You spit in the face of your paying customer. Now, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has called on the state administration to explore legal action against Anheuser-Busch as a stock devaluation resulting from the boycotts affected Florida pension funds. Ooh, ooh, man. Other states may follow suit. It takes 20 years to build up a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. Hmm. Yep. So, again, not only is Anheuser-Busch giving away their product for free, nobody even wants their product. And who could have predicted this? Well, how about this? How about the dude who is the heir to the entire Anheuser-Busch fortune? How about the guy whose last name, Bush, is Anheuser-Busch? Billy Bush is his name. And he makes a stunning admission that the Bud Light controversy was a huge mistake and that his ancestors would be rolling over in their graves. And as a Bush heir, Billy Bush made a stunning admission to the company's controversial ad campaign with Dylan Mulvaney, saying the decision was a huge mistake and sales continue to suffer. His ancestors, meaning his great-great-grandfather, who started Anheuser-Busch, would be rolling over in their graves. They are paying the price, he says. I think that the company greatly miscalculated what they thought was being inclusive. But it really was divisive. I think my family was, they live by the motto, making friends is our business. And they believed that bringing people together, making it sociable, fun, beer drinking experience was the way to go. People that drink Bud Light, he continued, really do not relate to that kind of advertising. And so it was a huge mistake. Yes, it was. Run effectively by midwits and woke morons who are simply trying to impress their own cohort inside of New York. This is why you do not move your advertising to New York or L.A. Because those people don't live in the real world. Why would you ever move it out of St. Louis, where your customer base is? Billy Bush effectively saying this uh, in an interview with TMZ. Check this out. Where we are today for a minute. Um, you must have strong opinions about the... Um, the Dylan Mulvaney campaign. Yeah, Dylan M Mulvaney campaign. Uh, I think my family, my ancestors would have rolled over in their grave. They were very patriotic. They loved this country and what it stood for. Um, they believed the transgender um, gays, the, that sort of thing was all a very personal issue. Um, they love this country because it is a free country and people are allowed to do what they want. But it was never meant to be on a beer can and never meant to be pushed in people's faces. So they would have um, they, they, they would have never marketed their brands that way. As you know, a AB was one of the greatest marketers um, ever in any in any business. Um, and they were incredible with what they came out with, the Clydesdales, the frogs, the, the, uh, the lizards, all the different all the different promotions they had, all the different advertising they had. And the last thing they would have done was to get as controversial as they did, um, as InBev has with uh, Dylan Mulvaney advertising. You can feel the pain in the man's voice. He's like, listen, dude, this is so painful because I'm watching the disintegration of my entire family legacy. This is why you don't sell out. That's why you don't sell out. Not everyone can flip a uh, Dave Portnoy style profit and get back their company for $1. Good for them. Seriously, bad for Anheuser-Busch. Let this be a warning in the night. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. This type of marketing will kill your brands. The destroyers of brands. These woke lunatics. Hey, somebody had to learn. Y'all gonna learn today. It's your boy, Benny. See ya.